Coming up on Ag Week TV, our cold, wet spring could lead to some changes in wheat acreage. What will the president's infrastructure plan mean for agriculture? I'll have details coming up. We'll hear about a farm education program just for women. And a popular ag personality makes her first visit to North Dakota. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Rose Dunn. President Trump has been talking about improving infrastructure since he was a candidate. Now, more than a year into his presidency, he has released a $1.5 trillion package that spans 10 years. The plan focuses on rural needs, but instead of federal funding, it relies on block grants for the states. $20 billion will go into a federal loan program aimed at attracting private investment as well as private bonds. Michelle Rook looks at how agriculture will fare under the plan. Rural America is excited about the president's $1.5 trillion infrastructure plan. But what will it really mean for agriculture? The plan spends $50 billion of the $200 billion annual federal investment in rural areas, which don't have the ability to generate user fees. We originate a lot of freight in rural America, but we don't have a lot of frequency and, and use uh, of, of that system. Lock and dam upgrades were identified as a priority, but there were no federal dollars specified for projects. Well, even being from North Dakota, I understand that the locks and dams on the Mississippi River really need to be improved a lot. You know, they're old and antiquated. Yeah, also in the plan, there's some curtailment of, of funding for the inland waterway system, so that's a, a real concern for us. While railroads made investments after the crisis in 2014, farmers are hopeful the plan will fund more improvements. So our rail to the west coast has been affected the last few years with, with cold winters through the mountains. With county budget strapped, the hope is block grants will also help fix thousands of rural bridges and roads that are deteriorating. Our bridges in South Dakota and our roads, some of our rural roads, have been a, a real obstruction to moving product to market. And from the river to roads, transportation impacts farmer profitability. If you make it more efficient, you'll get higher value for, for what you produce. 65% of the, the soybeans produced in South Dakota move to an export market, and the infrastructure is critical. I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. The key question regarding federal state cost share programs is still how will states come up with the money to qualify for the grants or for private funding matches for infrastructure projects? A big 2017 crop of table stock potatoes coupled with trucking problems have led to lower prices and concerns about how spuds will be shipped from the Northern Valley. Associated Potato Growers in Grand Forks handles about 30 percent of the valley's fresh or table stock potatoes. High yields in the Red River Valley last year, followed by a near record crop in Florida, have helped drive prices down. But in addition, truck driver shortages and a new electronic logging system that limits driver hours have made shipping potatoes even more challenging. We have to be able to ship them within a certain time frame to be able to market them. With the truck shortages that we've experienced, we were unable to supply some of our suppliers with the product that they were looking for. And hence, because of that, I think we've lost business. We're just uh, doing our best to move as much product as we can. Time will tell whether we get the crop all moved or not, I guess. Dolan says they were getting $15 to $16 per hundredweight until the end of February, but now they're getting $9 to $10. Generally good wheat yields around the region last year led farmers to think about planting more wheat this year. But Mother Nature interfered with those plans this spring. Jonathan Knudsen looks at how our late spring is affecting wheat planting. A month ago, there was good reason to think this northwest Minnesota field would be planted to wheat by now. But weeks of wet, cold weather have changed that. It's been a long, slow cold, snowy spring. It's going to put us behind uh, at least two weeks in planting. Tim Dufault grows wheat and soybeans on his fourth generation farm near Crookston, Minnesota. He plans to go half corn and half beans this year if the weather cooperates. If it doesn't, he and other farmers may plant less wheat and more soybeans. How different 
a week makes, you know, it would seem like it would never end the cold and win winter and we got some nice sunny days, warm, windy days and I think people are optimistic now. David Targerson is executive director of the Minnesota Association of Wheat Growers. He says farmers might need to think about a late season wheat variety if planting is delayed further. If it got into mid-May or late May, they might want to pick a variety that's earlier maturing, um, just to stay away from the heat. Mm -hmm. But right now, I don't think it's gonna, uh, they're gonna make any variety changes. Our extension is maybe saying, if it gets late, increase the seeding rate to help, because there's just not enough time and the heat hits the tillering of it. Although planting will be later than ideal, Minnesota wheat farmers are still optimistic about a good growing season. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. This week's crop stop takes us about 12 miles south of Moorhead to Comstock, Minnesota, where Mikkel Pates found organic farmers Mark Askegaard and his daughter Beth finishing the installation of an oilseed mill in automatic scale. They grow organic spring wheat, soybeans, and flax along with cover crops. They're getting ready for a possible planting start of May 4th. In addition to getting their equipment ready and sourcing their seed, being organic means there's some extra paperwork. Being organic, we have to have an organic system plan, which we work on so that we document all of our seed uh, sources and our equipment cleaning, as well as make sure that everything is done correctly according to OCI standards. Askegaard says prices for organics are lower than they should be, due in part to fake organics coming in from overseas. Ahead on Ag Week TV, Annie's project is back in North Dakota to help women become better farmers. Microessentials is a premium phosphate product. It's a dry granular product. The main difference with a microessentials type product is you have a homogeneous granule for the nitrogen, the sulfur, the phosphorus, and in this case, the zinc is all in one granule. If you ever have a desire or a need to learn more about what does sulfur do within a soybean plant, what does the potassium do for the corn crop, we have microessentials.com. We also have a great resource, cropnutrition.com. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, five right here, now I'm having tons up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Get your row crops off to the right start with an Early Riser Case IH planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH Early Riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH Early Riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Welcome back to Ag Week TV. Joining me now is Kristen Clark. You may recognize her name. She's a columnist for Ag Week magazine, but she also writes a popular blog called Food and Swine, and she keeps busy as a sixth generation Iowa farmer and mother of two. Kristen, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I love your state. In addition to all the things I just mentioned, you're also involved in a long list of other ag activities. What kind of propelled you to sort of become the voice of ag? Oh. Oh my gosh, that's a big title. I don't know if I can uphold <laughs> that. Um, 
you know, it was really unintentional. I, I wanted to start writing a blog so I could preserve some recipes. I started entering cooking and baking contests. And then the slice of agriculture in life just started bleeding on every page, and that's what people wanted, was to learn about farming. I mean, they came for the pie recipe, but uh, left with just maybe a increased awareness of what's going on on Iowa farms. And as it grew, you really more started to focus on being the voice of women in farming. Yeah, I, I think too often women have that seat at the table, but you know we don't raise our hands. We don't ask for things. And there are so many brilliant, powerful women behind the scenes in their farming operations. And they are a very important piece of the food and farming conversation. And I just want to elevate that and invite them to the conversation. So I try to line up with folks that believe that too. As you're out there working with these groups, uh, do you think it's a matter of there are more women involved in farming or they're just being seen and heard more? I think they're being seen and heard more. I think, you know, in the past, maybe we were used to being behind the scenes a little bit more. And in a lot of cases, that support role on the farm, which is vital and critical, we all know, uh, it tends to be a behind the scenes role. But you see, you know, I see in Iowa a lot more women stepping up, you know, board of directors, and we have, you know, that diversified front when we're making decisions that really impact lots of farmers' lives. So it's, it's encouraging to me. And in addition, you're also involved in Farm Her. Tell me about that. Oh, I love Farm Her. I'm an honorary member of the team. You know, I'm farming full time with dad, but the women of Farm Her, Margie Geiler Alanise, she started the company. They travel around, host great conferences, embracing women in agriculture, and promoting and lifting each other up is something that I take really seriously. All right. Well, thanks so much for taking time to be with us today. Thank you. Be sure and look for Kristen's column every month in Ag Week magazine and on agweek.com. Annie's Project is back in North Dakota. It's a farm management program designed to educate women about the business of farming. It was offered in North Dakota for several years, then discontinued in 2013. But recently, people started asking about it again, so an updated Annie's Project is being offered again on a pilot basis. Jenny Schlecht has more from the class in McIntosh County. After taking a break for a few years, North Dakota State University Extension has brought Annie's project back to the state, and McIntosh County had a big turnout for its 2018 class. We teach this specifically to women because women have a different communication style. They, they tend to learn better with other women. They tend to ask better questions. They're not as scared to open up and ask questions, and they bond really quickly. Write your questions down as we go. Annie's project helps women learn all aspects of the business of farming, including about about financial, legal, production, human resources, and marketing risks. Some of those things sort of sometimes get overlooked. You know, in the production side of things, we're all really good at um, raising and doing what we do. Um, but some of those other areas, depending on, you can't focus on all of them. So Annie's Project is just a reminder that all five of those risk management areas are important. It has been really good. Yeah, it's been at a level that I can completely understand. And I can have a conversation with my husband now. Tori Gross doesn't come from a farm background, but she's married to a farmer, and he wanted her to know more about the complicated business of farming so she can be more involved in the business. We talked a lot about our balance sheets and just being able to understand and read those and then um, also learning about the, the estate planning and the insurance policies, which was huge because I really never understood crop insurance before and how that all worked. And then the markets is something I really wanted to learn about. I took Annie's project because we are moving to the family farm. And I did grow up on a farm about two hours from here by Valley City but I've told my husband it's different between a farmer's daughter and a farmer's wife. Every night I go home from Annie's Project, we have a good conversation about what I learned, and then I, I sound much, I guess you could say, smarter. The women in the McIntosh County class said they would encourage any woman, no matter her level of farm knowledge, to attend Annie's Project. In McIntosh County, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Eighteen women took part in this class. They met once a week for six weeks. For more on this story, download the Ag Week app or check out the upcoming magazine. Spring seems to be here to stay. Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, we'll celebrate Soy Foods Month with some easy and healthy soy recipes. Hey.
I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55. Once around the block, 212, my right here, now I have them done. up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. Get ready for the biological revolution. Agzyme by Ag Concepts is the leading biological soil enhancement product on the market today. Agzyme improves soil health and fertilizer efficiency for healthier crops and better yields. Definitely is making a difference. I really feel that it gives me a bump in the soybeans and corn. I would say 55 up to 70 bushel soybeans. We've even had as high as 75. Probably the best bang for your buck. Join the biological revolution with Agzyme by Ag Concepts. Levisol is the most advanced nutrient efficiency solution, making phosphorus, zinc, and other key micronutrients more available to the plant. With three modes of action, it unlocks the nutrients in the soil, it makes the nutrients that it's applied with more available, and it is mobile in the plant for season-long activity. For more information, talk with your agronomy partner or visit WCDST.com. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Stein Seed Company is home to one of the most prolific, highest yielding corn and soybean breeding programs in the world. When it comes to research, yield is what matters most. With the largest private soybean breeding program in the U.S. and the industry's most aggressive corn research, Stein is in a class of its own when it comes to developing new, higher performing seed. Choose genetics. Choose results. Give Shane Kylo a call at 701-866-9864 to learn what Stein Seed can do for your operation. Weather portion of Ag Week, it has been a remarkable April, especially in the Midwest and the Great Plains and the Northern Plains. Colder than average temperatures through the 27th of April over really most of the continent. Exceptions, quite warm in the Southwest, down through Mexico and Florida has had a fairly warm month, but most locations cold. Now I should point out, globally, the spring, including the month of April, is going to turn out just like every other month has recently, above the 30-year mean and warmer than it's been in most of the last uh, 100 years at least of measurement. So it's not like this is a sign that uh, there's been a radical reversal in the, in the overall warming planet, but we've been ca caught in a very cold area. The coldest, at least anomalously cold area, has been northern Iowa and southern Minnesota. This small area still has a chance to break the record for the coldest April on record or come in second place. The rest of this probably going to be a top 10. Meanwhile, it's uh, becoming gradually a little less cold. In fact, it's warming up a little bit this weekend. Uh, some of these uh, warm areas into the 70s and 80s, but it's temporary as the jet goes through another little flip. We're going to start seeing cooler weather drop down into the northern plains and parts of the northern Corn Belt this week, but that looks fairly temporary as another high pressure ridge will build up. Jet stream, the main polar jet going pretty far north into western Canada and Alaska, and I think we may see a lot of this over the next few months, at least over the west, some fairly warm air. As we move toward the second, Second week of this forecast period, May 6 through 12, starting off warm, but I do think there'll be a little bit of a cooling trend. Nothing really cool, just a little bit of an adjustment, you might say. The really cold weather will remain Canadian this time. As far as the upper level winds affecting moisture goes, there is a system along the west coast that will move in and bring, I think, a good chance of rain, maybe some storms early in the week as the heat relaxes. That'll cause some showers and storms down through the Middle West. That'll then drop on south while we're cool and dry for a couple of days. Then as the ridge builds up back across the west, most of the Great Plains, Rockies, is going to be fairly dry. Southeast will get some rain and that'll be about it. Heading into the second week of the forecast period, rain systems will be moving mostly along the jet. There may be some token showers in the northern plains.
rains, but for the most part, it's going to be fairly dry, but not too terribly warm. So in summation, looking at uh, the first few warm days of the spring coming around recently, and a few more days in the 70s and 80s, rains though mostly fairly scant. Not a lot of widespread rains for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, or southern Canada. A few showers and thunder showers about all we'll see. The real positive here, after a disappointing spring, field work is getting underway. Get your row crops off to the right start with an early riser Case IH planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH early riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH early riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%? That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Ag Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Welcome back to Ag Week TV. April is National Soy Foods Month, and we're marking it with a couple of soy recipes and some great ideas for adding soy to your diet. We're here at Polly Ulrich's farm. You're a volunteer with Common Ground North Dakota and work with the North Dakota Soybean Council, and you have some beautiful, colorful soy dishes to share with us today. Yes, today we're going to be making some edamame hummus and edamame avocado spread. We're using two superfoods today, the edamame, which is super high in protein. These little beans right here have 35 to 45% protein. And we're also gonna use some soybean oil in also, our recipe as well. Also heart healthy. Exactly, has much lower cholesterol, and they're saying it's the healthiest oil that we can buy and use Good in to know. our cooking. So to start, a cup and a half edamame beans, a medium-sized avocado, a squeeze of lemon, salt, black pepper, onion powder, three tablespoons of soybean oil or vegetable oil, garlic, zest from a lemon, and then cilantro. And then I'm gonna let you... First I wanna chop? Yep, so first chop. I'm gonna pulse it a little. Yep. Okay, I think we've got it. And this serves up so nicely and it's so bright and green and festive. And personally, I like this better than guacamole. A lot less guilt with this it one. It is yeah. a lot less guilt. Soybeans are the underrated superfood because they have so much protein. And for ladies, they're the highest food in folic acid that you can find. You can use this as your appetizer for your parties or use it, use it in place of mayonnaise. Great idea. Yes, so you don't have those high calories that you get in mayonnaise. Instead, 
you use your edamame avocado spread or just straight edamame hummus, and it really kicks up your turkey sandwich. So much extra flavor, too. Yes. Well, thanks for sharing your recipe with us, Polly, and thanks to the North Dakota Soybean Council. You can find Polly's recipes on agweek.com. Still ahead, we have a big announcement about changes here at Ag Week TV. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Microessentials is a premium phosphate product. It's a dry granular product. The main difference with a microessentials type product is you have a homogeneous granule for the nitrogen, the sulfur, the phosphorus, and in this case, the zinc is all in one granule. If you ever have a desire or a need to learn more about what does sulfur do within a soybean plant, what does the potassium do for the corn crop, we have microessentials.com. We also have a great resource, cropnutrition.com. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. We have an exciting announcement to make about Ag Week TV. Michelle Rook is joining us as anchor. Her first show will be May 5th. Michelle has worked for Ag Week as a reporter since 2016. She grew up on a dairy farm near Watertown, South Dakota, and graduated from SDSU with a degree in ag journalism and dairy manufacturing, and she has a master's in journalism. Rook is also the farm director and market reporter for WNAX Radio, which she will continue. We look forward to her expanding her role at Ag Week TV beginning next week. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.